Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Uh, Gavin is in Chelmsford. Gavin, compliments, please. Hello, James. Hello, um, Gavin. <laughs> right. In your own time. Where do I start? In your own time, yeah, yeah. Gav. <laughs> I'm just, I've just been trying to get in the gaps between you speaking. I've, I've, I've listened for so long. I know the, I know the uh, ruse. <laughs> right. I don't think people give her enough credit. Imagine how difficult this job is. Imagine starting a new job, and on your first day, all of your colleagues are against you. And then you start working, you find all the customers are against you, and you, you're pretty much on your own. Um, you've got some, some people who are backing you in the cabinet and things, but <clears throat> the whole thing is turmoil, and, and it's totally unknown territory. She's going in there with no precedent. She's having to work out. She's going on. She's got the European Union against her. They don't want us to leave for various reasons. Um, I dispute that. I, I, I don't think they're against her. They're, they're for themselves. We've created a scenario in which that, oh, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah, ne that necessitates yeah. them defending their own interests. But don't forget yeah, that until 18 subtle, months ago... It's a nuance, isn't it? Yeah, it is, very. But, but until 18 months ago, they were our own interests as well. We've chosen to, 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 to polarise this yeah, situation. But, and she has to deal with I it, which again is grounds, grounds for sympathy. Point. Yes. I think it's slightly off the point because what we're talking about is good things about her. Now, she is, for whatever reasons, the EU are making it difficult. There is difficulty there. It's more than just the no, challenge okay, Again, I am going to keep picking you up on this. It's not for whatever reasons the EU is making it difficult. The European Union Commission is charged with defending and promoting the interests of European Union member states. Which they, makes they, it hard for her to do the job. Precisely, because she can't admit well, to the right public, then. because she get lynched by the Brexit lot, that this means almost by definition that we'll be worse off out than we were in. She can't say that in public, even though she clearly believes it in private. Now, that either makes her a fraud or it makes her a, I don't know, a damage-limiting, um, uh, duty-doing politician, which is quite a rare thing in the modern world. I've got to disagree with that. Which totally, bit? Because all of it, really. Well, hang on. Um, Wait, well, pick a bit. What do you disagree with? The thing that, that she thinks, she suddenly thinks Brexit is a good idea? No, I don't know. Well, I think she was a Remainer um, for... As much as anything else, the lazy reasons and the status quo. You probably guessed by now that I'm, I'm sort of Brexiteer. No, I hadn't. Um, I hadn't really guessed it, apart from you being a bit rude at the beginning of the call. <laughs> James, um, where was I? You put me off. Of See, this is now. this is what happens when people say I talk too much, Gavin. Yeah, you put us off. By not so you, talking. I think so you're not giving her enough credit for... For what? ...a very difficult job. Now, if, you, you position yourself as a caring... Let's not talk about me, because you're the first Brexiters to get through. So what's she done that makes you cheer? She's doing what the people voted for. Now, what, what, what? Not, specifically, Gavin? Well, you'd point at something well, and she say... Going, she said, it's... The people voted for Brexit, we're going to carry that out. That was 18 months ago. So what's she done since that gives you hope? There's a lot going on. The trouble is these days, the... It's not a trick question, mate. Just give me one thing that makes you go, right. yes, that proves that she's the right person for the job. What would you point to first? Just one thing. We Everything don't have to... is under the microscope these days and... Well, then that means it's easier to see, tonight. Gavin, if it's under the microscope. So just describe it to me. The thing that you're looking at under the microscope no, and thinking, that's good. To see. Some things you shouldn't see until afterwards. You should so they're not under a microscope. They're invisible. No... <laughs> Well, if I can just finish, everything is micro, you know, it's under a microscope these days. Now, she is obviously, there's things going on in the background, that's the point I was getting to, that we don't know about that will become evident. Right. There's obviously loads of things. So I mean, the things, the things you're really pleased with are the things that you don't know about? No, well, you asked me whether she's doing a good job, and I'm saying to you, she's doing a... And then I said, and then point to the evidence. So the thing that you would say, there you go, James, that proves she's doing a good job. What would you point to first? Well, the fact that she's 
triggered Article 50. She's got things moving. There's obviously things going on in the background. Things crop up, you know, regularly. So we don't know, then? I mean, this isn't... Let's not fall out, but you're telling me she, she must be doing lots of good things in the background that we don't know about, and that's why you think she's doing a good job. You're entitled to Which that view, mate. I'm not going to mock it. Say to Ian Dowd, and I don't think it was a fair question, do you, do you still believe in remaining? Because what, what does it matter what she believes in? She's carrying out the will of the people. Well, again, that phrase is, uh, you'll forgive me, very much at the top of the list of, of fatuous and, and, and meaningless slogans. She's carrying out the will of Jones. some of the people, and it, and it might be different today, but you, you see the She's problem... She's carrying out what the referendum result... Did, but again, that was 18 months ago, so the, the problem is, of course, that... I, I admire you for, for, for ringing in and talking to me, but obviously when I keep pointing out to you that you've got not a single shred of evidence to support your notion that she's doing a good job... Um, and yet you still think that Brexit is a good idea, you actually, without intending to, you explain why I think she's doing a good job, because she has to actually keep people like you happy. I, 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 I just want her to keep saying to things then? like Brexit Carry means Brexit. That's what I mean, exactly. So, so she has got a significant swathe of the electorate who've got nothing more than just parroting will of the people and Brexit means Brexit. And people like me sit here, people like me sit here and think they must want some evidence. Gavin must want some evidence. He must want, or he must be able to point at something substantive, something meaningful, something evidential. And you can't, James. and you don't want to, either. No, James, listen, you... We're not so talking you... about me, Gavin. No, but you're not letting me get the point across. You're twisting things... Well, tell me again, then. The question's simple. About Brexit. Go on, then. And you know, you, you, you do this every Not day. me, mate. We're talking about you. So what, what is the to... thing that you're really pleased with? How many times have I got to tell you? She's carrying out... The will of the people. The... She carried out what the vote asked for. So how? What is she, she doing? She's triggered Article 50. She's talking to people in... But in, in terms of um, something that you point at and go, Article 50 was a vote in the House of Commons. Brexit means Brexit means nothing. We can all agree on that. So you point at it and you go, that proves that she's playing a blinder. What would you point at? I've just told you, haven't I? What, what do you want me to say? I want you to say, here you go, James, here is something she's done that will definitely make us better off after we leave than we were in the European Union. Such as, what would you say she should be doing to say she's doing I, a great job? I don't think she can, mate, because she knows that this is damage limitation. You're the one that's telling me it's not. That's your opinion that it's damage limitation. Uh, and it's no, an opinion you. based on the fact that I can't point to anything that suggests otherwise, which is why I'm asking you to. Because you, you, your opinion is the opposite to mine, so you have to provide the evidence. Well, what is she doing that makes you think, yes, winning? James, you talk for a living, I don't. You can talk I randomly, think so for a living, Gavin. Talking, talking is the next bit. We can all think. I don't know what else to say, apart from... Will of the people. Out. Well, you can keep putting words into my mouth. Yes, that is one way, but you can try and make me look like a burk if you want. I'm not, mate. It's nothing to do with me. I, I, what were you going to say then when I said will of the people? What were you going to say? She can carry out... She's carrying out what the vote asked her to do. She's, yes. not, well, she's not going around saying, oh, yeah, I'm going to do it, but I really don't think we should or anything like She's saying, it's a bit of a Thatcher-like thing. She's... She's it's going... The opposite this of Thatcher, is what I've got to do. I always knew what Margaret Thatcher stood for. What does Theresa May stand for? Hard Brexit or soft Brexit? She stands for, I mean, this hard and soft, again, you're creating a binary position, which is totally unnecessary. Okay, hard and soft is the opposite of binary. Brexit is a conglomeration of rules and regulations which... Oh, there's a whole myriad of things which involve us leaving, and one person's idea of hard and one person's idea of soft are totally different things. No, in the context of most people's understanding, it means that either we have a deal or we don't have okay, a deal. You're speaking for most people, but you only ever speak to three people an hour anyway. Ga Ga Gavin, you know, so <laughs> bless you. Gavin, hard means no deal and, and soft means a deal. Then you have various different no, interpretations no. of what a deal might be, no, so you've got several different really kinds of deal. Hard. Oh, mate, well, I don't, I don't want to... Okay. Hard Brexit yeah. is to yours. Pardon? My interpretation is different to yours. OK. Shall we hug it out, mate? I don't want to argue with you today. It's not my fault. You I'm can't... Not well, you, you, you kind of are. Well, I said, I said let's not argue. You said we're not arguing. I argue again. You do this for a living. I don't, Gavin. 
And you're up against so much as every day. And you, oh, you, Gavin, you can't do this. Well. This is terrible. It's so insulting to people who think that they've got arguments to make to say that they, their arguments are really good. They just can't make them very well. If you've got a good <laughs> argument, mate, it knocks us all out of the park. That's why I keep I'll inviting you. That's why I ask the same question several times so that people have a million opportunities to put some flesh upon the bones of their opinion. But if you just keep repeating the words will of the people to me, at some point you will feel silly. And you can't blame me for that, Gavin. I said she's carrying out what the, what the vote asked her to do. Yes, and I said, where is it going well? What is the point in her saying, oh yeah, I'm a Remainer, but... That's what a... would be the advantage that everyone would pick on it? Should we have one more go? Should we have one more go? Shall we? One more go? Yeah. What's, she, what, what's your favourite thing she has personally done so far? Bearing in mind that Article 50 was a parliamentary vote. So w w w what, when you look at Brexit and the thing that makes you doubly certain that you voted for the right result, what, what, what has the Prime Minister done in 18 months that, that supports your conviction? She's... Uh, ..done triggered Article 50 i said apart from that because that was a parliamentary apart vote <clears throat> she's standing firm and against maybe it may be against her her, her own personal wishes she's not letting that cloud her she's she's doing the right thing there's been a referendum there's been a vote let's do it and she's She's doing. She's going through the process of doing that okay. without wavering at all. You think she's not wavering? No, absolutely. When have you ever heard her say, "Oh, I don't, don't know if this is a good idea"? I don't know if that's, she's not. She's saying. Well, when when she was asked if she'd vote, diff, when she was asked if she got a minister for no diff, or no deal now. You, you did ask me a question. Uh, you, well, when have I ever heard her wavering? And the answer is very simple. When she was asked if she'd vote differently in a second referendum, and she refused to answer the question. It was a pointless and unfair question. Yeah, but your question was, was, when has she ever wavered, Gavin? We're going to go round in circles, and, I, and I'm going to go. Do you feel you've had a fair she's crack of the whip, it. Gavin? Do you feel you've had? Oh, a fair yeah, thank you. Good. Well, you mind how you go, mate. Ben's in Woodford. Ben, say something nice about the Prime Minister. Hello, James. Hello, Ben. Uh, yeah, I am a Brexiteer, I must admit. Um, still? The only nice thing... Still, yeah. Okay. The only nice thing I can say about her, and I, and I give a complete accolade on this... Go on. When Cameron resigned... She was there, she took it up. Where was everybody else? Where was all these guys? That, that, well, they were all standing you know, as well. Boris Johnson, yeah, Michael Gove, yeah, Liam Fox. They, well, they did David Davis that, stand? I can't... No, no but the no, other three did. No. Andrea Leadsom. I mean, what do you yeah. mean, where were they? They were in the they elect... They, they were in the battle to lead. Yeah, but they fell away. Well, they lost, Nobody mate. Nobody wanted to take up the battle. It's a bit like, it's a bit like saying Manchester three. City won the league last year. Bad. Where were all the other clubs? Where were all the other clubs? Yeah. They all fell away. <laughs> <laughs> so, ben, that's the best you've got. Is she won? She won the leadership election after everybody else bottled it. If I, we were going, we're we're doing Brexit or whatever they want to call it. It's a big nonsense anyway. Hang on, you why, voted for it. Why aren't you negotiating on our behalf? Because you are one of the greatest debaters I've ever come across. You're very kind. I've got to tell you. Yeah, but and, I do it for a living. Don't forget. We need people who can actually do this. I know. But we need people who can do this. Yeah, but you Why mate, she's what? She's going and doing it on her own, and she's got. She's not. She's got David Davis. People. She's got Liam Fox. Oh, she's got Boris Johnson. But they, you voted for it. Why are you saying? Shall I answer your question? Yeah. Can't do this. Yes. Because I would have to say to you, I will go in there and do my level best to make the best of a bad lot. I would do my best, Ben, to deliver the, the least bad version of what you and your ilk have voted for. So if you want me to go in there, we all have to agree that you've done a doo-doo. You, Ben, have done a stupid, but I will go to Brussels and negotiate the, the least bad outcome of the stupid what you did. Really? Well, no, I won't. I, I won't. I've got a job. I've got a contract and everything. But that's why you can't have people like me in the gig. I don't. I don't consider that I've been stupid. I know, and that's what makes my job so difficult. You know, no, listen. She's she's doing the job that nobody else wants because she's in a no-win situation. And at the end of the how day, can she be in a no-win situation if Brexit is a good idea? Uh, well, it is a good idea and a bad idea. Let's put it that way. No, it's, let's not. How can she be in a no-win situation if it's a good idea? Listen, let's I not am. get into the Brexit debate because you're going to win that one easily. But you voted right. for it! 
So what? Well, how can I win the debate with you without you changing your vote? I'm, I'm, but I'm entitled to my vote, aren't yeah, I? Of course you are, but not if you've lost the debate, surely. Except, yes. Well, Mike, hello. Good morning. What do you want from yeah. Theresa May here? Well, what I'd like to see from Theresa May is, you know, an appointment or uh, in her reshuffle, I'd like her to appoint um, people that are totally behind the Brexit um, process. Um, because I, I think that, you know, she's been um, attacked, you know, from within her own party by people that don't really want us to leave uh, the, the, the EU. And I'd also like her to uh, publicly acknowledge and accept that unlimited immigration has caused uh, a lot of the problems that we are that we've seen um, you know in our public services particularly in housing with the NHS all of these things and nobody seems to accept that the reason that the uh, the referendum result went the way it did was because so many people are sick of the impact of unlimited immigration on services in this country but do you accept that that it isn't just about immigration the pressure that services are under do you, do you do you accept that a large part of that pressure has coincided with massive cuts to those services no, I don't, because I think oh. it's, it's a chicken and egg. I think it's a chicken and egg situation. The, the cuts are being made because the money that's, that's being spent on trying to house, cater for, and 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 and, and attend to the needs of the, the the quarter of a million people that are coming into this country every year, net migration. Okay. It's unbelievable. All right, obvious. Mike. Let's let's you and I remember this moment, because. Yeah. When we've got immigration under control, so if we're both still alive by that stage, right? Let's well, let, well hang on. Let's have a yeah. let's have a conversation again because I I disagree firmly with what you've just said. I'm not saying immigration hasn't had an impact. Of course it has, but mm -hmm. I, I disagree with you that it is that it is what is bringing down those services. What's bringing down those services is austerity and councils having forty percent of their funding slashed. And if if you can ring me and tell me in two, three, five, ten however many years it takes uh, when when you and others who feel like you do about immigration if you can ring and tell me that the health service is now uh, tickety boo and fully funded that social care is tickety boo and fully funded and fully joined up with the health service then i will i will eat my hat i will bow to you mike but i no, no, i, but I, I doubt that moment will yeah. ever come yeah, but what, I, what I'd like to hear from you and other people that, that, that clearly doubt that the, the, you know, the, the Brexit, you know, leaving the EU is the right way to go, what I'd like to hear is an acknowledgement that the, the cost of, of attending to the needs of a quarter of a million people every year is astronomical. We don't see the figures. We don't get acknowledgement of the impact of it. And it's so blind in the obvious. It's not that the, the, the sole reason, but I mean, it's... The figures must be astronomical. It's Look that, but it's cost. very no. I, I don't. I don't doubt that adding people to your country means adding people to your services. But adding people to your country also adds staff to those services, Mike. It's a deeper no, picture. I, I it's disagree. a deeper. Well, no. I'm sorry. Have you been to hospital lately? It's a deeper picture than you were suggesting. Yeah. Yeah, I do, well, I do. I have been to hospital lately, unfortunately. Well, uh, all blonde, it's, it's all obvious. blonde, blue-eyed nurses, was it? And doctors no, from not Kent? Not at all. Not at all. No, massively the other way. I mean, I haven't seen a, a um, you know a white English-speaking uh, doctor for for I don't know how long. I mean, I'm not knocking. I'm not knocking well, people that come true, from other anyway. countries. No, no. I, well, I, in my experience, what I'm talking about is the fact that you know when. When you get the numbers of people that are coming in and, and, and the problems and the cost of, of catering for their needs, it is obvious to me that, that, that immigration numbers should, should have been cut dramatically years ago. Okay, so, I mean, you want, nobody... so you want, just let me bring this back to the reshuffle, you want yeah. not a, a Brexit remain balance in the Cabinet, you want more and more actively pro-Brexit ministers. Absolutely. Okay, thank you very much, Mike. Mike in work, Scott. Harlow to talk about equal pay. Is it a personal experience of equal pay, a battle, Scott, or is it just a general comment you wanted to make? Uh, it's a bit of both, actually. All right, go on. Right, OK. Now, if women want equality, then would you agree that that should be 
in it, in it, the word equality hints at right across the board, everything, everything you can think of. Yeah, sure. Do you agree with that, Sheila? I do. Okay, then why doesn't that apply to the divorce and family courts where it falls down heavily in favour of the woman? She usually gets the house, the kids, all of the, the money, everything, and the guy walks away with nothing, has to get a one-bedroom flat, everything else. You know, you can't argue with statistics right across the Western world. Yeah, you've got no, you're, um, you're, a swathe you're, of guys. You know, you're, you're right, you're right them. that there are... It seems to me, I've never gone through a divorce, but that you're right that there are uh, apparently unequal attitudes within um, the, the divorce courts and the, and the payment to children and all the rest of it. But they're all, you know, they're, each case will be different. However, if you don't mind, I want to keep this strictly within the workplace and issues around the workplace. OK, well, I've got an answer for that too. Go on. Um, and that is, let's look down the street right now. Any listener, do you see guys working in the road? Do you say, see guys sweeping the streets? Do you see guys up on a roof? Yeah, I do. Do you see women doing any of this? No. Well, that's the one Sometimes. for one reason, because we do it better. Yeah, but en masse, we do it better. Sports, everything, we do it better. There's one thing that women do better than guys, and that is giving birth and rearing children. Sorry to be sexist, but it's true. Do you think that's sexist? Uh, yeah, but it's true. Well, if it's true, it's not sexist, is it? If no, it's sexist, it's unfair sexist and not true. true. No, that's a per that's a perversion of the actual meaning of the word in my book. Who is it? You're rewriting the dictionary. No, I'm not. It's a difference between the sexes. And if you go down in, if you if you if you state a fact and it is deemed to be um, derogatory, although I I don't mean it that way, I'm just stating the truth. Well, you know, remind I mean, me again what we're good at: having children and what else? Um, uh, con conceiving um, and rearing children. Oh, oh, sorry, conceiving and rearing children. Okay, so so if, for example, I sit next to a man and do the exact same job as him and have exactly the same experience as him and in the same age as him um, and work in the same company as him, should I be paid less because I have a womb? I'm just trying to check how deep your, your attitudes to this go. Should I be paid less right. because I have a womb? I've got an answer to that as well. I don't doubt it. Well, yeah. Um, when you go out on a date, who pays the tab? Can you answer me? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to think. Well, uh, again, that massively it's depends. A while. No, it's taking me a long while because there isn't one answer to it, Scott. That's why. <laughs> but you see what I'm getting at? Well, there I do. A in America, they said that the woman gets 77 cents on the dollar what the man makes. And that's for one reason. Because what's, what's hers is hers and what's mine is hers. <laughs> we have to pay for everything. We, we, we Are you married to us or in a relationship? Uh, Absolutely not. I won't have a woman for one simple reason, because the woman that I want doesn't exist nowadays. Okay. Just so have you got a man instead? Uh, no. Oh, no, I'm, I'm just checking whether you were just, own. you know, <laughs> experimenting. I'm quite, quite happy on my own. Because okay, well, is it, that's a good thing, Scott, because I think if you opened your mouth at, a, at an average date, you would remain on your own for quite some time. Thank you for your call anyway. Kevin has called from Croydon. Kevin, hi. Hi, oh, Sheila. Um, well, I think we should have all the barriers to war that are possible because um, the, the big, big danger in the future is at war with either China, Iran, or even Russia. Now, that will be in nobody's interest that we, uh, that we will uh, get into conflict with them. But it's, uh, these things are driven by economics. They're never, in my view, in the interest of the, of the people of either society. They're manufactured uh, on the basis of lies, mostly, and the other people are always evil and we're good. You know, and if you tr if you trace even the Second World War, the so-called Good War, who was funding Hitler in during his rise? Western banks were funding them. You know, the very people who now call him the devil. It's these things are economically driven, and they are very, very rarely anything to do with the benefit of the societies that get involved in these wars. So, the more obstacles we have to the creation of wars, the better for the world and for 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 ourselves. Uh, you know, in the UK, that's my view. And, and the the existence since, I think, 2010, um, David Cameron created it, didn't he? The National Security Council in the UK, which looks not just at decisions to go to war, but at security matters more generally. Does that reassure you in any way? 
Uh, not really, because, uh, you, you know, the, I agree with Mark who, uh, two, about two calls ago. I mean, the, the intelligence services uh, produce, uh, you know, the, I, I think the real power structure in, in society is the, gov- the elected government are, are the salesmen for, for the people in power. They're not the actual power. I think they're, they're driven by economic forces above them. And, and, and those economic forces control the intelligence services and the intelligence services deliver the message that they're pay- just like school teachers or radio presenters. You know what you can say and what you can't say. It's all driven from above. Everybody's uh, uh, basically a puppet of their owners. And, and that's oh, hang, on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Excuse me. I'm a puppet of no one, Kevin. What, what do you mean? I mean in, never mind radio presenters. But what, what do you mean by everybody's a puppet when it comes to decision making over war? Well, I mean, uh, I mean, the people do, you know, the, the, the power system is, the, the important part of it is the economic part, and that's hidden, that is covert. You know, we get information from the intelligence services, and you're meant to trust it, but why should you when they keep giving us wars we don't want on the basis of lies? You know, this has happened throughout history. Uh, it, it, I mean, your man, uh, what was his name, Eisenhower, um, he warned uh, the world at large against the, the rise of the power of the indul- military-industrial complex. Well, here it is now. It controls everything. It's about money. And uh, I'm, I'm, I was a school teacher for a long time, and I found myself involved in stuff that I really disagree with all the time. You know, organised cheating, which was the, the way I saw coursework. I listened to the radio. We, there's certain things we can't debate. You know, uh, it's, it's... What can't we debate? Well, you can't, you can't debate, for instance, what happened on 9-11. It's just uh, it's forbidden. You know, we, we have a narrative that we must believe. It's a religion, really. Once you have to believe something and you're not allowed to debate it or, or talk about what happened, uh, that you just have to accept well, I, the I don't, that, Well, I, I, I don't think it's true that you can't debate 9-11. I, I, think, I, think, well, I, th- I, think, I think if you start saying it was them, it was them Jews, then, then I'll stop debating with you, if that's, well, if mean, that's the direction you're, you're travelling in. Um, well, but, yeah. <laughs> There we go. Well, okay, all right. Well, there you go, Kevin. Thank you. Uh, I'm I'm sorry, but you know there is a, a mountain of evidence as to what happened on 9/11. Not least the forensic evidence of what happened on 9/11. If you're going to come at me with Dr. Google and say that you actually think it was X, Y, or Z group of people, um, uh, then fine. Let's talk about it. But not if it immediately leaps to what I suspect. I'm not accusing you directly, Kevin. But often when these conversations take this turn, uh, what I suspect is anti-Semitic talk. And that, um, I won't debate with you, actually. Let's go back to your calls. We're talking about morality because of Tim Farron's uh, interview today where he says uh, he basically didn't really tell the truth during the election campaign about his views on whether gay sex is a sin or not. Sonia is in Islington. Hello, Sonia. Hi, thanks for taking my call. Um, can you hear me? Yes, we can. What would you like to say? Yeah. Well, I mean, I was driving along and I, and I keep hearing all these people try to define what sin is. And it's simple. Sin is a transgression of the law. Um, that says in John 3, 4. And um, people think, that the, so then you say, what is the law? The law is the commandment. But it's not just 10 commandments. There's 163, if, I, if, I, uh, if, I remember, if I'm right, commandments. And also, people come along with their own opinion. And there are different types of law within the commandments that we have to obey. Where, where in the commandments does it say that gay sex is a sin? Well, in the commandments, it does. It, it does. But if you, if you know the 163 commandments, it does tell you in there that... Um, well, where? I, I haven't ever heard of 100. I've heard of 10 commandments. I haven't heard of 163. Exactly. exactly but there are what they, that's what the Christian churches preaches. What, on, on, not just but where 10, are they written down? Churches. They're written down even in the book of Genesis where, where, where it says God created man and woman. He didn't create man and man. <laughs> he created man and woman. Oh dear, I think I know where this conversation's about to go, okay. uh, Sonia. You know, <laughs> if you know where it's coming from, then actually there's no point in talking to you. Well, uh, no, no, the, uh, of course there's a point in you talking to own, me. Everybody comes along with their own opinion and they, they, they put their hands on the Bible and say, and, and say you know, uh, but the, the commandments are there and the trouble is if you don't if you've never heard that there are more than 10 commandments then the world is we have a problem well i i have heard, i have certainly read in the old testament the the verses in leviticus 
um, that that talk about man lying with man shall not lie with man and all the rest of it. But yeah. then, the, but then there are lots of other things in the Old Testament which we wouldn't go by today, would we? Stoning uh, yeah. women, for example, or not eating shellfish. I mean, it, it, we can all pick pick things out of religious texts to suit our own views, but the, the Old Testament no, is no, called no, the no, Old no, Testament no. for a reason. I but it is in the New Testament as well. God said in Matthew 15, Think not that I've come to destroy the law or the prophets. For verily I say unto you, until heaven and earth has passes, no, not one tittle of the law will be destroyed. So how can you say in, 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 in separate the Old Testament and the New Testament? They're all in one. And this is what it says in Matthew. And Matthew is a New Testament. But do you, do you live your entire life by a 2,000-year-old book? No, 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 because it's not true, because there's a lot of things that prophesize now, and it's not a 2,000-year book. It depends on, how, depends on how you perceive it. You perceive it as a 2,000-year book, but if everybody was to uh, adhere to what the commandment is, which is 100 and more than, more than 10, then maybe this world would be a better place, and everybody comes with their own different opinion. All these religions, which are man-made... Yeah, yes, but man, evol man evolves, doesn't, doesn't it? Or doesn't he yeah, or she? We, 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 we live in a society now that is... We live in a society now that is very different. We, we still have very ma many of the same values, but we also have different ones too. And what, what gives someone the right to say to somebody who is gay, you are a sinner? I'm not, say I'm not saying that somebody is, who is gay is a sinner. The Bible says it. The Bible says, but you believe it. Our sin. Well, if I, if I, if I'm, I'm not a Christian, right? I'm not a Christian, and the, the uh, and, and you're doing a very good impression of one. I am an Israelite. I'm not a Christian. Jesus wasn't a Christian, nor was he religious, right? I'm a Hebrew Israelite, so I'm not a Christian. God, Jesus didn't come on this world, this planet, with religion. Man but but, you, but you, but you believe in the what the Old Testament says. But it's a part, it's a part of the, listen, the um, commandments was given to the Israelites. It wasn't given to anybody else. So most of the other Gentiles cannot sin according to the Bible. The, 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 the commandments was given to, the law, statutes and commandments was given to the Israelites. So, so, it doesn't, so, it doesn't, so it doesn't apply to anyone else apart from Israelites? But, it, but they, can't, they can't break it because the, the command, the, the commandment was not given to them it was given to the israelites who broke the commandment and so there was there, there were certain curses were put upon them yeah, but, 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 the, but, the, uh, but the commandment surely are not not just applying to one group of people they apply to all of humanity but the the the, the, the israelites and spread the gospel but because they transgress they then were put into slavery and these curses were put upon them. Most society, whether they call it Gentiles, were not given the commandment. It was the Israelites who were okay. given. And if All you right. read the Bible properly, you'll know. Okay, thank you very much. That's Sonia there. Uh, Daryl is in Bracknell. Hello, Daryl. How are you doing, Ian? I, um, I'm very well. What would you like to say in reaction to that call? Oh, that call? <laughs> um, first and foremost, I'd just like to say that... Well, Jesus and God didn't say nothing because they don't exist, and I'll just leave it at that. Good. I'll go to Daniel, who's in Croydon. Religion and homosexuality, why does one care so much about the other, do you think, Daniel? Um, it's, it's a very good question, Jim. I think, to be honest, I kind of question your thought process on in regards to Christianity, to be honest with you. Um, I don't mean it in any disrespect, but the Bible is quite clear in regards to... Um, homosexuality, homosexuality and what is this going to what isn't it? Which, which bit and of the Bible? Try, I, well, the Old and New Testament. I'll get into that. No, 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 let's do it now because we, we should get it out of the way well, earlier. The, 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 the New Testament, Testament, you can find a couple of quotes from St. Paul with reference to um, modern interpretations of what Sodom and Gomorrah represents. But just, just remind yeah, me. No, 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 no. You see, you're doing it already. Okay, well, just tell me the things I'm, that Jesus I'm, I'm, said. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to do that. Tell me the things that Jesus said. I'm trying to. I'm trying to get. Go on. We need to understand about. The, we need to understand about, about the Bible, James. It's not just. It's, it's God inspired. So there's many people that contribute to the Bible. So Paul is irrelevant. He wrote most of the New Testament. So if you're trying to excuse Paul's teaching, then this excuse the whole. This excuse the whole Bible. You can't cherry pick the things you like and the things you don't like. So Paul made it. 
scripture's not over So you're not going to tell me what Jesus what, said, no, are you? Well, you well, well, just, what do you mean if I let you get a word out? Here is the question. Well, what did Jesus say about homosexuality? Daniel will now answer that question directly. In First Corinthians... God, the God-inspired Bible made a reference to First, First Corinthians. Corinthians is a letter that St. Paul wrote. What did Jesus say on the record, in the Gospels, about homosexuality? So, so are you using the Bible then? So you can't be a Christian then? It's a simple question. What did he say? You can say nothing, because that's the true answer, or you can carry on blustering. No, I'm not carrying on blustering. Right, so what did Jesus say about homosexuality? So, okay, when, when Paul spoke, you, you, were, you were speaking through Paul. Was it like God, Jesus speaking through Paul when you wrote uh, It's not... Paul, I, listen, I, I, I will give you... All the time you need to answer the question that I'm asking. So it's very, very simple. Either you repeat the words that Jesus said, or you say he didn't say anything. What are you going to choose? Did he say anything? And if he did, what were the words? That's, 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 that's not the right question, James. That's okay, well then we'll go back to the question that I started with, which is why do you think religion is so obsessed? In fact, we can talk about you. Why do you care so much about gay people? No, well, you're putting words in my I didn't say I care so much about... Well, you phoned up on an issue that is about gay yeah, people and religion. You've clearly identified yourself as religious, so now I want to know why you care about the other bit of the debate, which yeah, is the gayness. Let me get a word out, James. Let's call your conversation a two-way street. If I, I try and explain my point... No, Daniel, point, mate, you can say this all you want. It's a two-way street. It's a conversation. The question that you've declined to answer is what did Jesus say about a homosexuality? And we both know the reason why you're not answering that question is that he said diddly squat. So we move on to the second question, which is why do you think religion can cares so much about homosexuality. Now, conversation is a two-way street, so but it, but it's not, it's, not, it's not an exercise in me asking a question and then you and answering answer something it. completely different. So why do you think religion... Go on, then. Let's try again. I don't, I don't think religion cares so much about homosexuality. You do, and people like you do that discuss it all the time. The Bible's clear about what, what, what's sinful, what's not sinful. The Bible doesn't care so much about right, homosexuality. Mate, I, I, listen, you, you have a great day. May, may God go with you. You can't answer the question about Jesus and you won't answer the other question that I'm asking, which is kind of the point and leads me to conclude that what you're really terrified of, Daniel, is something that's going you on inside yourself. You can, you, can, you can make accusations and put words in my mouth all you want, James. What, what, are, what words have I put in your mouth, Daniel? Just, you make it. You make a reference about me as a person. You don't even know who, who I am. What words have I put in your mouth? I've given you an answer. I've given you an answer. You don't lie. I've given well, you an answer. So you let's do it one more time. Mean, one more time. Mean, one more time, my brother. What did Jesus okay. say about homosexuality? And I've and I've answered your question. Go remind me what he said. What were the words? Okay. No. Yeah. Let me let me let me make a point. I've answered the question. You, you, I don't remember what you said. Okay. How did you answer that question? See, I'm trying to. I'm trying to answer. What did Jesus say about homosexuality? Let Go. Speak for more than one to ten seconds. When Paul wrote the letters in the New Testament, it was God who was speaking through him. So Jesus might not. You're referring to Jesus' words in, in red when it's when it's quoted in the Bible. But there's other people in the Bible who wrote letters and scriptures in the Bible that are God inspired. So it was God who spoke through Paul when he wrote that. What did Jesus say himself. about homosexuality, it's, Daniel? Let me just write that down. Well, you don't like the answer. I've given you answer. You don't like it. You what did Jesus say it. about homosexuality, you can Daniel? Pick. I've given you the answer. You don't so what were the words? Jesus quoting Jesus in the Gospels. He said... It's unfortunate, James, that you don't like the answer, but that's, that's the answer. You what did he say, it. Daniel? The parts of the Bible you don't, you Just give me the quote. Just one line. You don't need chapter and verse. One line will do. What I did Jesus say first, about homosexuality? First Corinthians 6, <laughs> 6, when Jesus spoke... That's a letter to St. Paul wrote. God what did Jesus say? He wrote, he wrote in First Corinthians... What did Jesus what say? It's very simple, James. What did Jesus say? It's very simple. What did Jesus say? I, I told you, First Corinthians, Paul, when Jesus spoke through Paul, he wrote this. He what wrote did Jesus say? Referring to, that's what he said. You're not listening to him. Did St. Paul ever meet Jesus? That's what I'm saying, James. Did St. Paul ever meet Jesus? Uh, I mean, they wasn't living at the same time, but does that not, does that not mean that God can speak through Paul? Like, what? So I, what did Jesus that's say? Not, that's what Christian, Christianity, James. What, what did Jesus say? What did Jesus say? What did Jesus say about people who are gay? where you're trying to come from, but I just don't get it. Try again. Like, really? What did Jesus say? I just, I just, I told you, First Corinthians, when Jesus got... That's a letter written by someone letter. that never met Jesus. That's, that's what he wrote down. Okay, so, James, can God speak to you now? Can God speak to you now, James? Let's find out. Question. Let's find out. Can God speak to you now? You don't want to answer that question. Answer my question. Can God speak to you now, even though you haven't met him? Simon Conway is here with the headlines. Why I regret saying gay sex is not a sin by Tim Farron. And my question for you is, why does... Uh, religion obsess or care obsess is a judgment call why does religion so often involve um anti-gay teachings 
0345 606 0973. Phil's in Borehamwood. Phil, what would you like to say? Hi, I, I think I'm going to be a bit of an anti-climax after the last caller because I'm, I'm uh, heterosexual, um, but I'm an Orthodox Jew. Yeah. Um, we uh, we believe that that we define God as being the creator of the world and creator of life, and as such, He gave us that gift. He gave the gift of creating life to man. Yes. So when people, when when men go into a, a homosexual relationship, it's not that we, there's any hate or, or 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 anything, but it's just that we feel that they're not using that gift that God's given us, that's our divine right, a uh, divine gift, um, in the most appropriate way, which is through marriage and through procreation. And, and this, is, this is where the Abrahamic religions diverge, isn't it? Because under, under that reading of Judaism, uh, and, and forgive me if I'm wrong, it, it, it's not the faith I was raised in, so I don't know it as well as the faith I was raised in, even celibacy then becomes sinful, arguably. Mar marriage, is a du marriage is a duty and celibacy is a sin. Yeah, but it's but you're talking about it like it's a way of life. Um, we we what, don't like what's a way of in life? terms of their sexuality. Sex, sex is, is something you do. It's Are you allowed sexual. contraception? Um, it's in certain circumstances, yes. But that means you're having sex without creating children. But that's because because it nurtures a loving, caring relationship, which is what this is what. But there's nothing in the text about that, is there? What do you mean? Well, there's nothing in, 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 in the Talmud or anywhere else about that, about you can, have, you can use contraception sometimes because it nurtures a loving relationship. This is the problem I, I find with... with you, um, no, no, I'm sorry to correct you. No, but, of course you must. But a, but a husband has, has obligations to his wife, um, and without being too gamey about it, that includes giving her what we call owner, which, call, which means time, spending time with her, and giving her, showing her the love and affection that, that she needs. See, I again, this is... Uh, and, and that doesn't necessarily need to involve procreation. No, but, but that, we're not now talking about choosing contraception when, when you feel like it and claiming that you can't have sex without creating when, when, when you also want to. You, you are trying to have your cake and eat it. Um, but that is the nature of the more, the more fundamentalist one's religion, the more you do edge towards trying to have your cake and eat it. Because either straight people have to try to have a baby every time they have sex, or... There is a procreation defence of disapproving of gay relationships. You can't have both, can you, Phil? Well, yes, you can. Well, because... well I know you can, but I mean, log <laughs> logically, logically, but you that's, can't. But that, that, that's what I'm saying: is is you're you're looking at it in a very binary yes or no way. <coughs> no, uh, you a relationship, are. a marriage, <coughs> is is about yes, it's about raising a family, and it's about, as I say, utilising. So, if a gay couple adopt a child, are they allowed to have sex? It's not. You see, again, when you talk about allowed, that's not the word we would use. What would it, you use? It's it's taking a, a gift that God's given you and not. It's like it's okay, like. Okay, so if gay people, people allow, if gay people adopt a child, are they, are they? No, hang on. If gay people adopt a child, are they allowed to take the gift that God God's given them? What do you mean, take it? Well, I'm using your phrases now because you disapproved of mine. The the gift that God's given them is sex. Sex is enjoyable because um, God wants us to enjoy it. It also creates children. You say you shouldn't enjoy it unless you're trying to create a child. I'm just wondering whether if gay people have already got a kid that they've adopted or that they've um, had through surrogacy or egg donation or whatever it may be, are they allowed to enjoy the gift that God has given to you? What do you mean enjoy it? They're, they're, well, they're, have it then. Are they allowed to have sex if they've already got a child? I know it's never nice to have to have religious beliefs that you probably haven't thought that deeply about, properly explored, but if you're trying to argue that sex is fine for straight people because they have children, unless they're using contraception because they don't actually want to have a child, but they're still allowed to enjoy sex, and I'm asking whether a gay family, two gay men who have a family, are they allowed to have sex? Are they, I'm sorry, you don't like allowed. Are they allowed to do it? Are they allowed to do sex? But this is back to what I'm saying, is that they've, they're... Yes or no? Wasting is too strong a word, but they've been given a gift. Man has been given a gift yeah. by God to create life with a woman. And, and it's like you... So contraception's not allowed, then? Because it was a minute ago. It is allowed in a... In a mar in but that's a mar not going to create any life. Pardon? That's not going to create any life. But by, but by, but by marrying... And agree Men get married. Pardon? Men get married. <laughs> to women? No, to each other. We're talking about homosexuals at the moment, mostly. Right. So men get married, in, and men have sex, Judaism, and men Judaism. can't have children, and every time you have sex with contraception, you're married, you're having sex, and you can't have children. So what's the difference? 
Because we're nurturing a married relationship. So are they. Which and they've got a child. But you, you have to you have to take into account that Judaism doesn't accept homosexual marriage. So so we we are using the word allowed. It doesn't. It doesn't. In terms of marriage. Yeah, it it's not allowed. It doesn't, what do you mean allowed? It's, when well, we it's not accepted, marriage, it's not allowed. We, These are synonyms, aren't they, in the context of this conversation? We, we define marriage in terms of a heterosexual union. Right. We don't define it in terms of a, heter a homosexual and, 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 How would you feel if gay people wanted to define what your marriage meant? But it's, it's what we... It's based on the Bible, based yeah. on the Torah that, was, that goes back thousands of years. Yeah. You can't come along years later... And, and what does that say about contraception? Change. Pardon? And what does that say about contraception, that, that, that several thousand year old teaching that you're using to justify your belief that, that gay sex is somehow sinful? I didn't say gay sex was sinful. Well, that's what the whole phone-in's about. You can use whatever word you want. I, I, this is what I've deliberately tried to steer you away from, is to oh. say that it's not, we wouldn't say... Uh, no, hang on, the bit, about, the bit in the ancient the text about contraception being OK, I just want a quick heads up on that. Pardon, say it again? The bit in the ancient texts about home, yeah. uh, about contraception being okay. I just want the heads up on that. What do you want me to say? Well, where is it? It's part of a loving, caring relationship. If you're in a relationship with a, with a, with a woman, of course you are. So you're allowed to have sex that doesn't lead to the creation of life, but gay people aren't? As part of a marriage, Just yeah. to be clear. Okay, that's fine. Uh, we got there in the end. Oh, boy. It's coming up to 11 o'clock. You're listening to James O'Brien on LBC, who rather controversially believes that everybody should be allowed to have sex with whoever um, consents to having sex with them. But that apparently makes me sinful. Dominus Vobiscum, my friend. A, a simple question about Brexit Britain. Here is the newly installed minister for departing the European Union speaking six months ago. You're absolutely right. And this figure of 50 billion doesn't have any legal basis whatsoever. It's been manufactured. And um, it doesn't seem um, likely that there will be such a bill for 50 billion pounds. It's part of Project Fear. Health warning, don't believe it. Um, and, the, you know, we, ha we pay into the European Investment Bank. And so, actually, we're going to get a windfall from leaving. So I think that the, the scaremongering about having to pay to leave is just not true. We have a lot to gain. Our best days lie ahead. And we're going to be enjoying the freedoms and enjoying the, be the benefits that we gain from leaving. <laughs> So, to focus on that sentence, the scaremongering about having to pay to leave is just not true. It has now been agreed that we'll pay just shy of £40 billion. So it wasn't scaremongering. She has a point on, on the legal basis in the same sense that... Um, uh, I can't think of a meaningful analogy, but, but we could, I suppose, have just refused to pay, but that would have been akin to um, uh, cutting off both our feet as opposed to just cutting off one of them. So the line we focus on, scaremongering about having to pay to leave is just not true. So don't believe it. It's now been proven to be true. We, we are paying to leave. How come she got promoted? And I'll take any answer you've got, and I, I may try not even to argue on this one because I just want to know what your understanding of how someone can say in public, it's just not true, we won't have to pay to leave, we are paying to leave, she got a promotion. Michael's in Hampstead. Michael, how do you make sense of this? Hi. Uh, I think it's perfectly clear. We are not paying anything that we weren't already committed to paying. But she said we wouldn't have to pay that. No. She, she said we wouldn't have to pay to leave, and we're not paying to leave. These are sums which, or in fact much greater sums, than we would have been paying had we remained members. No, no, let's, have a, let's, listen no, again. No, let's just on, listen hold again. Hold on a second, hold on a no, 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 let's, let's be clear that we're both no, talking no, about no, the let's, same let's, thing, let's, Michael. No, let's... let's All right, let's not listen to what she said. Let's listen to what you want us to think she said, then. No. no well, let's listen not. to what she said, we, then. You've played it three times already, so I don't need to... Well, she said again. scaremongering well, about well, having to pay to leave is just not true. Don't believe it. She said we won't have to pay. It is not paying to leave. So the it bill that we're paying, paying isn't the bill she was talking about? No, it's not. Oh, OK. Because we're, 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 not, we're not paying anything we weren't already obliged to pay. If we remained members of the EU, we would have had to pay these sums plus vastly greater sums. And the fact is that Remainers, like yourself, um, just want us to believe that uh, these are sums which would somehow or other have gone away if we'd stayed members of the I, I, I'm not, not making any position sums. myself. Let's listen again to what she okay, said. Okay. And, and no, 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 let's, no, 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 we're just going to. Let's, let's, and then we'll have a look at it through the lens of you suggesting that when she talked about the bill, 
that we are paying, um, she wasn't when she talked about the bill that we wouldn't pay, talking about the bill that we've now agreed we will pay. We'll just check together. OK, let's go. You're absolutely right. And this figure of 50 billion doesn't have any legal basis whatsoever. It's been manufactured. And um, it doesn't seem um, likely that there will be such a bill for 50 billion pounds. It's part of Project Fear. Health warning, don't believe it. Um, and, the, you know, we, ha we pay into the European Investment Bank. And so, actually, we're going to get a windfall from leaving. So I think that the, the scaremongering about having to pay to leave is just not true. We have a lot to gain. Our best days lie ahead. So it doesn't seem likely that there will be such a bill and scaremongering about having to pay to leave is just not true. And, and, and I promise I'm trying to understand you properly, Michael. You're suggesting that she's not talking about the bill that we are paying. She was talking about another bill that we might have had to pay but now won't and never would. Indeed. OK, no, that's, that's and, uh, definitely you, a view. You, 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 it's 11.39. Hayden is in Catford. If, if, if you agree with Michael, I'd love to hear, hear, hear from you. Um, she wasn't talking about the... the well, hang on, Michael, come back a minute. No, what no, what, what, what was she talking about? No, no, hold on a second. You're claiming to be impartial. Well, you just called me a Remainer. You uh, can't call me impartial and a Remainer in the course of the same phone call, unless no, we've left I, logic I, I at the said, door. I didn't, I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't call you impartial. I said you're claiming to try to be impartial. No, I'm not. Indeed. Uh, earlier on in the day... No, I'm not. She said, I'm doing, my, I'm doing my very best to be impartial. Those yes, we were, talk, we were talking about no. homosexuality and religion. No, no, we were talking about... Oh, mate, look, let's was, talk was, about you, OK? And your belief that Suella Fernandez was not talking about the EU departure bill when she appeared on Question Time and answered a question about the EU departure bill. Just talk me through your logic. You are claiming to be impartial. Oh, mate. But in no, in fact... Here we go. Fact, you, you continuously play things which are prejudicial on one side. You're not playing anything on the other side. What would you like me to play? Misty? No, I'd like you to be sensible. What would you like me to play? I'd I'll play it now. And then you can answer my question. Okay. Michael Gove talking about Brexit. Okay, get me, well, Michael Gove about talking Brexit. about the Brexit bill. Talk, talk, oh, hold on a second. Talk, which clip? How, which bit? How, how about Jeremy Corbyn expressing an opinion as to whether he wants to stay in the European Union or whether he wants to leave the European Union? Okay, I, 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 I'll dig that out and then I'll play it later and then you tell me um, what, what, what it is, what bill she was talking about when she said um, okay. scaremongering about having to pay to leave is just not true and she also said it doesn't seem likely that there will be such a bill. So what is the bill you, you, that you, she you, was you talking were, about? You were claiming... Oh, Michael. You were claiming... No, hold on a second. You were claiming that... Everybody who voted Brexit didn't care about what happens in the future. Now, the basis of that is we don't know what's going to happen in the future. But if we had voted... But we know what happened in the past. We know what happened in the past. And she spoke about a bill. What bill was she talking about, Michael? No, you're not listening to me. We would not know okay, what would have happened if we had remained in the European... No, that's true. And, Keep, and say more stuff and then I'll ask you the question we're seeing, again. We're seeing, we're seeing ever closer... Uh, union, which which is what they want. Yep. We're seeing talk of a European army. army. We're talking about common defence policy. Yep. We're talking about bank harmonisation, tax harmonisation. Yeah, except we're not. All these things. We're talking about they Suella are. Fernandez and your contention that the bill she was talking about six months ago is demonstrably and substantively different from the bill the government has agreed to pay. So what bill was she talking about, Michael? She was talking about a bill... To to pay to leave the European Union. These are. Well, hang on, you said a minute ago she wasn't. Had. No, she talked about a bill to leave the European Union. It doesn't we seem not, likely that there will be any such bill. Not, we are not paying <laughs> anything which the United Kingdom was not already obliged to pay. It doesn't it's seem likely that there will be no, any such bill. She categorically not. said we weren't obliged to pay anything. You yes, know this is true. This is a stupid argument, that. Michael. You no, can no. listen, disagree with me about lots of other no. stuff, but we both know that she was no, talking you're, about you're, the you're, bill that we're paying. You agreed with her that there was no legal basis. It's a totally political sentence. Which is why we're looking at... It doesn't seem likely that there will be such a bill. So what is the bill she was talking about if it's not the one we've agreed to pay? Well, we're talking about the ones where there is a legal basis. The, the Europe, we have entered into commitments with the European Union to pay certain sums over future years, yeah. and these are the sums of money which we are now... So scaremongering about pay. having to pay to leave is just not true. Is that statement true or false? It's true. So she was wrong when she said it? No. She so we are, we're not paying to leave? Not, we're not paying to leave. We're paying to meet our legal obligations. As, as a precursor to what? As a precursor to nothing. 
as a precursor to nothing. So why are we paying to meet our legal obligations? Well, you're not paying to meet your legal obligations. These are your words. I can't do this anymore. I literally just repeated your own words to you. You have, you didn't. You have <laughs> legal obligations, and when you have legal obligations, okay, you have to meet them. Right. And both, that's what we're doing. We're not paying anything extra to leave the European Union. Let's listen to it again, just so that everybody else listening to the programme can be clear yeah, that you, you another, are clear. You don't have to listen. You, can, you don't have to listen. Seriously, you can head back off to the unicorn farm. But everybody else likes to know, rather than just believe. You're absolutely right. And this figure of 50 billion doesn't have any legal basis whatsoever. It's been manufactured. And um, it doesn't seem um, likely that there will be such a bill for 50 billion pounds. It's part of Project Fear. Health warning, don't believe it. Um, and, the, you know, we, ha we pay into the European Investment Bank. And so, actually, we're going to get a windfall from leaving. So I think that the, the scaremongering about having to pay to leave is just not true. We have a lot to gain. Our best days lie ahead. And we're going to be enjoying the freedoms and enjoying the, be the benefits that we gain from leaving. Right, so, are you still there? Yeah. Yes, I am still what, here. What is she talking about? Where is this 50 billion figure? Where, where did it come from? Oh, because, because the, the Cameron government didn't tell us about it. Oh, Lord. Did they? No, on, on question time six months ago, when she talked about the 50 billion pound figure and said we wouldn't have to pay it, what figure was she talking about? Do you live on a unicorn farm? Because you just yep. told me that I live on a unicorn yeah, farm. Yeah, I, I, I find that high, So what, what, where did that £50 billion pound come are from? You a, are you a good oh. quality journalist or not? Do you believe in calling your callers in by name? <sighs> hmm? Well, I, I, I respond to evidence and arrive at conclusions. You're more than welcome uh, so, so, to disprove so believe, my, uh, Michael. Uh, Fifty billion uh, pounds. Uh, what figure is she talking you about? Believe in a unicorn farm. I do uh, believe in uh, unicorn uh, farms. I believe in unicorn uh, farms. There, it's given. So there we go. We're fine. You can insult me. I'll insult you. Everything's cool. Now we're back to the I'm substantive not, I'm question not, I'm in not hand. Insulting you. I'm just repeating what you said. You oh, believe in oh, unicorn Lord farms, above. and you believe that I live on one. Fifty billion pounds. What figure is she talking about? I have told you several times, you're not prepared... No, no, what is she you're talking about? When she this. said the £50 billion pound figure, what was she a bill, talking about? A, a bill to leave the European Union. Which <laughs> <is not> <laughs> <laughs> it's 11.45. Bye now, please, no more.